We won! All thanks to the monitor. Hey everyone, Digital David here. Today in this video, I'm gonna be checking out the Scepter U27 4K Ultra HD monitor. I did receive this product to review, but any opinion expressed in this video is strictly my own. That being said, if you're interested in this product, you wanna find out more about it, the link to it will be in the video description. You can see the nice retail box and packaging right here, walking us through some of the key tech specs. So this is a 27 inch monitor measured diagonally. 4K resolution, 3840 by 2160 p It's an IPS panel with a 70 hertz refresh rate, and they do have a blue light shift option for us as well, especially if you're gonna be staring at this long-term. It's really nice to have those blue light controls. We have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, display port, HDMI, and 99% sRGB color gamut as well for this monitor. Visa mount compatible built-in speakers. They list all the features right there for you to check out yourself. And you can see a nice breakdown of the ports and IO right there too. And you can see it from the backside. And then we have a rundown of what's included in the box. Now let's go ahead, let's open it up and look at the contents. Here are all the package contents. First up, you can see we have our warranty card. This does come with a one year warranty. Next, we have a customer service and contact card complete with website, email, and 1-800-US phone number. Then we have some stand setup instructions right here. If you want to mount this with a different stand using a visa mount, either 75 by 75 or 100 by 100, or 75 by 100 or 100 by 75. They walk you through all of those mounting options right there. And then you can see we have our user guide and manual complete with everything we need to know about the monitor. They walk you through a ton of tech specs information, how to set up, install the stand, how to connect to it, different resolution options and troubleshooting help and support. Next, you can see our screw kits right here. Our next screws are gonna be for the base and the mount that's included. And our hanging screws are if we're gonna to want to use this to attach to a different monitor mount or stand. Then you can see we have our generic universal power cable and we have our power supply. So this is not integrated. You will use the barrel plug. And they have one included display port for us. And we have our Scepter Phillips head screwdriver. Then you can see the stand itself, really nice, made out of metal, solid construction. It's just gonna easily snap in and back out. And then you can see our base, also made out of metal, and you can see the four feet we have on it and where we're gonna attach the included screws. Last but not least, we have the monitor itself with the Scepter logo and branding, speakers on the back, a Kensington lock. We have all of our ports and I.O. clearly labeled for us right here. DC in for our power, HDMI 3, 2, and 1, display port and audio out. HDMI 2 and 3 are both 1.4s. HDMI 1 is 2.0 and our display port is 1.2. You can see all of them right there and get a feel for how thick this monitor is. You can also see all of our menu buttons and controls right there. Now let's flip it around and you can see the main screen. 27 inches measured diagonally and take a look too. Even with the cover on, you can see the bezels are very, very thin, almost non-existent. Now let's go ahead, let's get the stand set up. So here's everything you need for stand installation, a Phillips head screwdriver, which is included, the four neck screws and your two pieces of the stand. So basic synopsis is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna connect this piece to this piece with the four screws and we're gonna connect this assembled unit right into the monitor. But to best get this installed, first thing I'm gonna do is actually install this piece snap it right in place. And now we have enough lift that I can just gently set this up here and kind of hold it with one hand, put the screws in and tighten everything in place. So now you can see all four screws are tightened and fastened in place. And now we're ready to turn the monitor over and use the stand. So check that out. It's got a nice wide base. We do have tilt options with this. So that's our max tilt down. It doesn't really tilt down at all, but we can tilt it back up. There's no swivel left or right besides you just physically moving the monitor to the left or right. And there's no height adjustment either. You just get that basic tilt functionality with this stand. So check it out. You can see I got the monitor plugged in, powered on. Everything looks great. We're using a Windows 10 PC. Let's go ahead. Let's bring up our menu. You can see we're using HDMI 1 as our input. That's HDMI 2.0. And we're getting our full 4K resolution at 3840 by 2160. 
and we're currently at 60 hertz so we could drive that up to 70 hertz changing and tweaking some things with our gpu we could use our nvidia control panel and change that if we wanted to take advantage of the 70 hertz so here's the menu quick start picture color and system let's look at these very quickly so here's our quick start options you can see we can change our picture presets we can adjust the volume right here aspect ratio we can change our source here's your blue light options if you want to turn that on or off and we can turn overdrive on or off so we have different options for that right there depending on what we're after then you can see we have our picture settings right here different presets aspect ratio sharpness then we have our color options. So you can choose your color temperature right here with our gamma tint saturation. And again, there's the blue light settings if you want to access that. And then lastly, we have our system settings right here. There's overdrive again. We have a sleep mode, our languages, our OSD position. If we want to put a timer on, a transparency, volume options, mute and reset. So there you go, guys. It's a very simple and basic menu with a lot of controls. Now let's go ahead, let's look at the picture settings. So you can see I got a picture loaded right here and we're just gonna cycle through the different picture settings. So here's our standard mode. Now you can see RTS, here's our FPS. Then you can see our eco option. We have our movie option, our user. So we could customize this and change the backlight brightness and contrast ourselves. And then we go back to the standard mode. Now I'm gonna cycle through those again, but this time with the lights off. So here's the standard setting again. Then we have RTS, FPS. We have our eco mode. We have our movie option. Then we have our user settings. Currently everything's at 80, 50, and 50 for backlight, brightness, and contrast. But we could tweak those however we see fit. And then you can see we're back to standard. Now you might be wondering, hey, David, what's DCR? Well, I'm glad you asked. So that's our dynamic contrast range. And you can see currently we have it off on our photo and now we have it on. I'm looking really hard at this and it's very hard to tell any sort of noticeable difference. I really feel like just the brightness changes a little bit when we turn it off. So let's go ahead, let's look at it again with the lights off. So here's DCR off. And here it is back on. And again, no noticeable difference besides what I feel like maybe the brightness changes just a little bit between the two settings. You can see the whites and how everything's exposed. And maybe it just gets a little bit brighter actually with it turned off. So now we're gonna look at those same picture settings again, but this time with a video. So you can see on the screen, we have a 4K nature video playing and we're currently in standard mode. Now we're gonna go to RTS. FPS, we have our eco, then we have our movie, and then our user setting, and then we go back to standard. So let's cycle through them quickly again, so you can get a feel for how each one tweaks and changes the picture quality a little bit. Now let's go ahead, let's do that same test again, but with the lights off. So here we go, the lights are off. You can see we're currently in standard, RTS, FPS, eco, movie, user, and back to standard. So now I wanna show you what it's like to browse the web using popular websites. First up, we have The Verge, which is a popular tech blog. Watch as I scroll. This is 4K, again, full resolution, 60 Hertz. So you can see what the refresh rate and response times are like as we're browsing right here. Everything's really clear and crisp. Let's go ahead, let's select an article. Here we go, Nintendo Switch. So you can see how everything loads on the screen. Images look great, text, everything's fine. Very clear, comfortable for browsing. Here's another popular page you may look at. Here's an Amazon page. So you can see what that's like. Again, we can browse quickly back and forth so you can get a feel for what it looks like. And lastly, here's the YouTube trending page. So check that out. You can see all the different videos, thumbnails, different font and text sizes. Everything's really clear. And it's really enjoyable to browse the web with this monitor, which is what you would expect. So now it's time for one of my favorite tests. We're gonna be measuring the input lag on this monitor. Now keep in mind, input lag is different from response 
time. This has a five millisecond response time. Typically the lower the value, the better, and that's gonna be great for gamers. But same can be said with input lag as well. You want to see a lower value up top, and then they continue to increase depending on how the monitor refreshes. Typically you'll have your lowest value up top and your highest value down below. So with that being said, input lag is gonna measure the difference between how long it takes from a signal from our device to actually display on the monitor. Also important if you're into gaming. So here we go. You can see our input lag right here at the top, 1.6, 1.7, not bad at all. Then we should be around nine here. Let's see. There we go, 9.3. Then we should be around 16 down here based off of that first value. There we go, 16.6, 16.5. So not bad at all. Honestly, for some other Scepter monitors, I've had that top value right here be 18. Yeah, you heard me right. So 1.7 is great for this monitor. In fact, I'd say they're overachieving. Now we're gonna test out the built-in speaker quality using this binaural microphone. This is gonna capture the audio a little bit better than my microphone will, kind of like you're here in the studio listening. Keep in mind, speakers on monitors really are never fantastic, but usually I find that they're good enough, and I'd say that's the case for these speakers as well. We're gonna play a couple of seconds of a song off of Music Chef's album, Tropics. Music Chef is DMCA safe, stream safe music for content creators to use so give them a listen today let's go ahead let's sample a couple of seconds So I always like to point out it's better to have built-in speakers and not need them than need built-in speakers and not have them. So count me impressed. They sound good enough if you do want to use these, but it's never a bad idea if you always want to maybe use your nice headphones or if you want to get some external speakers to hook up, you have that option with this monitor. So it wouldn't be a monitor review without some gaming footage. So here we go. We're playing a quick round of Fortnite at 4K resolutions, 60 FPS, with an RTX 3070 and an i9-900K. That's the specs we're using. I know at 70 hertz, 4K, five milliseconds response time, it's not ideal for gaming. This is definitely more of a business productivity monitor, but if you did wanna have some budget-friendly 4K gaming, and you even have a system that can push 4K 60, well, I think you'll really enjoy gaming on this monitor. We're also using the Epic settings right here, so everything looks pretty good. Let's move back and forth and get a feel for how everything looks on the screen. So far, so good, very enjoyable experience. This is chaos. Oh my gosh. That's my teammate. We get him? All right, we'll take the assist. Shoot. 
We won! All thanks to the monitor. So overall, let me show you guys my final thoughts in regards to this monitor. You'll be hard pressed to find a better value today if you're looking for a 4K 27 inch monitor. This is gonna be one of your go-to options. I expect this monitor to hold up great long term. I personally use two Scepter monitors here in the studio. They've been running basically nonstop since 2018 with no dead pixels flickering or anything else. So I expect this to do the same. I'm very pleased and comfortable recommending Scepter products due to the great experience I've had as a consumer. The only thing I think I would change with this monitor, obviously it'd be great to have even a higher refresh rate, but that's really geared towards gamers. This is more enterprise business and you could do some casual gaming at 4K60, which I thoroughly enjoyed with this monitor. With that five millisecond response time, I wasn't sure how I was gonna feel about that with gaming, but we didn't have any issues at all, and it was great. Now, I'm not a gaming snob, and I have to have certain X, Y, or Z in place, so for me, just casually gaming, not competitive, I really had a great experience using this, and I'd be happy to game on this monitor again. Now. With that being said, I know I'm singing its praises. There is one particular thing I'd like to see improved with this monitor in the future that isn't just the continual improvement of technology throughout time. That would just be coming with a stand that gives us some height adjustments and maybe some swivel options as well. I really would like to have that feature, but I can't fault them too much because they do make this Visa mount compatible. So you can really you know, pair it with the stand you already maybe have, or you can buy a very affordable third-party stand on the market today. Overall, solid choice, incredible value. Three HDMI ports, a Visa mount, built-in speakers, display port, 4K, not only is it 60, it's 70 hertz, so you pick up 10 extra hertz for the refresh rate. So if you do wanna do some gaming or maybe some sort of frame rate sensitive work, you will enjoy having those 10 extra hertz with this monitor. Well, that concludes our video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget the product link will be in our video description below. Please go ahead, check it out and do your shopping from there. Any purchase made through that link helps support our channel at no additional cost to you. So we're really grateful and thankful for all of your support. While you're at it, can you go ahead and hit that like button for us? and subscribe to our channel. We have new content coming out daily and we don't want you to miss anything. Please go ahead and give us a follow online and make it a clean sweep. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Twitch, TikTok, Discord. You can message us on WeChat, check out our website and join our free newsletter. Thank you guys so much for being here. Don't forget new content daily and we can't wait to see you in our next video.